Hi guys, welcome to this special edition of Pro Tips where we'll be dedicating the whole episode to explore the best practice to clean the uncured resin off your 3D prints. We have heaps to get through, so let's start now. So, you may think a whole episode dedicated to cleaning is overkill, but as resin developers, you'd be amazed at how often we get asked questions about the best products and practices for cleaning the models after they've been printed. Okay, I think the best place to show you this process is down in the print lab. I'll see you down there. So, welcome to the Monocure 3D Print Lab. Here we are, we've got a series of resin printers. These are all the ones that we've had on the YouTube set so far, reviewing and testing them. Over here you can see that we've got some experimental pigments. There's a nice fluoro yellow that uh, keep an eye out for that. We've even got some gold pigment there. And yeah, we obviously do a bit of testing down here. Over here is our post-processing area or washing area. Here you can see the pre-wash of resin away. Uh, it's pretty dirty and our uh, clean resin away in the uh, ultrasonic cleaner and of course our AnyCubic light curing unit which also washes as well but we just use the ultrasonic for now. Over here this is where we do our airbrushing, our paint finishing. Uh, we have the amazing MTM paints there and of course the FDM doing some work for us over here. What we need to do is get a model off one of these printers and show you our process of how we do the cleaning here. Now you see the knob that I've printed there, uh, you know that I don't like touching these lids with dirty fingers and the knob does a great job. So you can stick them on or screw them on. So let's take the, the build plate off this one and we'll have a look what we've got. We're very careful not to drip resin anywhere. We've got one of our Monocure 3D swatches. So guys, doing dealing with resin away or any solvents, make sure you, of course, you wear your safety glasses. We'll just come over here to our pre-wash bucket. If you have a look in the pre-wash bucket, you'll see that it is pretty filthy. Now this is an advantage of resin away because even though it is dirty, it still has an amazing job at cleaning the resin off. You'll see straight away, that just with this soft brush, that just one dunk in the resin away does an incredible job of getting rid of that excess resin. And even on the top of the build plate there, looking very, very clean already. But what you'll find in there is there would still be some trapped, and especially in these areas here, the very fine lines, there would still be some trapped resin. And so that's why you need to come over to an ultrasonic cleaner, that's what we do, and we'll put that in to the ultrasonic cleaner bath. So normally I'd leave that in there for around five minutes time. I usually don't use heat, but if you wanted to, you could put it on about 23 degrees if it was very cold in the room, but it's usually not necessary. So we'll have a look. I think even after that short amount of time, you'll notice that the resin away has done a very good job of cleaning the trap resin. And the next stage is to get rid of the excess resin away. So we come over here. I'll just turn the spray booth on. This makes a little bit of noise. Get the compressed air. You can see that the excess resin away blown off. The detail is very, very good there. I'm very happy with that. And I can see that there's no trap resin. It could have been left in the ultrasonic cleaner a little bit longer, but for the purpose of this video, I'm happy with that. It's important to remove the excess resin away for a number of reasons. One is to be able to see that you have cleared all the resin. I don't like washing at this stage. It's important you don't let the water come in contact with the resin. At the moment, it's still soft. It is still uncured. We haven't done any post curing. It's off the printer and it's just had some washing done. So if you allow it to get in contact with water at this stage, the water can infiltrate the resin surface, especially the edges, and it can actually cause cloudiness and even cracking. Avoid it at this point. Take the model over here and pop it in the curing unit. We start curing it. Now while that's curing, so I'll just explain to you why I've left it on the build plate. Any part that is you know, quite thin and flat on the build plate. I know that we don't recommend printing things flat on the build plate, but if they're not very thick, you can print flat on the build plate without too much problem. I mean, the biggest issue with printing flat on the build plate is a suction effect, which causes the models to fall off the build plate or not print correctly. So leaving it on the build plate, the main reason for doing that is it allows a thin part like that to remain flat. If you take it off the build plate, you do change the structure of it, and then when you cure it, you can get a slight bend in it and it won't be flat. But this way I know that when I get it off the build plate, it's actually gonna remain flat and it's gonna be flat forever then. It's very hard once 
it has bent a model like that to get it to be flat again, especially after it's cured. What it's doing guys, it's cross-linking the material and making that tough resin go as hard as it can be. Now obviously the longer you leave it in the post curing unit the tougher it's going to be. In this case, you know, for this demonstration we don't need to leave it in long. Just long enough to make sure that that surface is cured enough that I am confident to wash it in water and get that resin away off it. So I'll stop it there. Looks exactly as it did before, there's no different. So we'll go and wash it in the sink now and have a look. Okay, so I've just washed it in water, now we're going to get the excess water off. You now take this off the build plate and there it goes, came off very easily. But remember there is a bit of excess resin there that hasn't been cleaned. So I'm going to pop it back in the ultrasonic cleaner. We'll let it do the other side and see how it gets on. That other side should be nice and clean now. Double check it. That's looking good. So now again we're going to come and get the excess off with the compressed air. So we'll put it back in the curing unit, we'll cure the back side of it now. Before again it gets washed in water, we need to make sure that the back side is completely cured. So that should only take a few minutes and then once that's done I'll be confident that we can wash it again with water. So I've just washed the back of it, let's get this excess water off again. So now I know it's cured, I'm happy to give it a little wipe down and make sure we get off the excess water. We can now head back upstairs. Okay guys, there you have it. That's our process for washing the models. I hope you found it informative. I know there are a number of different products that might help remove the resin. Unfortunately, some of these can cause other issues such as cracking and splitting. They also become saturated very quickly, which can leave your models feeling tacky. ResinAway took our chemist over 12 months to develop. It lasts longer than an alternative cleaners. It doesn't evaporate, it's considered non-flammable, and best of all, it has low odor. Remember, resin away can be used multiple times as the resin will drop to the bottom of the container, leaving fresh product wash after wash. When you eventually need to dispose of the used resin away, you can either leave it in an open container outside in the sun, or dispose of it the same way you would house paint. You'll need to check with your council for the easiest way to do this in your local area. If you'd like to take the resin away challenge, we have sample size bottles available. Thanks for watching, please subscribe to the channel, I'll leave you now with shots of Joshua back in the print lab cleaning up the rabbit we saw earlier which is now finished printing.